Thank you for joining me today on Lakeside Chat with Debbie. I hope you're all doing well. Today we're going to be talking about the fact that God has a destiny for each of our lives. God has a plan and a purpose. He doesn't just have us down here to survive. He, um, he knew the plan that he had for you even before you were born. And let's... Uh, Jeremiah 29 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not calamity, to give you a future and a hope. And I'm going to just use the example today of the story of Esther. Um, we're in the holiday right now. Today is Perm. I don't know how many of you know anything about the biblical holiday of Perm. But Perm and Hanukkah, which was just celebrated in December, are two holidays in the Bible that are just meant for their memorials, remembering how God saved his people from annihilation. The enemy has always wanted to destroy the Jewish people because he knew prophetically our Savior had to be born from the Jewish lineage and had to be the line of David. So. We're going to talk a little bit. I'm just going to give you a summary. Go and read the book of Esther. Um, you will be blessed. It's just, it's like a fairy tale, but it's history and it really happened. So just a summary of um, Perm and the book of Esther. In about 465 BC, the Jews were in exile in the land of Persia, which is modern day Iran. And King Xerxes was looking for a new queen. And he had asked to have all of the beautiful virgins in the land brought to the, the um, castle. And they had to go through a time of preparation for before they could come before the king. And when Esther had her turn before the king, she found favor in his eyes, which we know was God's um, doing because he was going to be using her to save his people. So Esther ends up becoming queen, uh, uh, you know, the queen, and King Xerxes doesn't know that she's a Jew. In the meantime, um, King Xerxes, his right hand, the second in command in the land, named Haman, Haman hates the Jews and specifically hates um, Morde Mordecai. Mordecai, um, just to backtrack a little bit, Mordecai, when Esther was um, a young girl, she was orphaned. And Mordecai is her cousin. He's an older cousin and he raised her. Mordecai is also an advisor to the king. And um, he would not bow down to Haman. Haman wanted him to bow down to him, and he would only bow down to God. Haman, that just struck a, a chord, you know, it just struck a chord in Haman's heart, and he just became bitter, and he, and he hated Mordecai, so he hated the Jews. And he convinced the king to um, sign an edict saying that all of the, the Jews would be annihilated. And he cast lots to find out what day they would be annihilated. Um, Perm means the casting of lots. So that's where that name came from. So when Mordecai send, sent word through a messenger to Queen Esther and told her about Haman's plan and, told, and, and, and asked if she would go before the king and cry out to him, to save the Jews, to save her people. And she sent word back, you know, if I go before him unsummoned and he does not find favor with me and, and, and put out his golden scepter, I'll be killed. And Mordecai responds with um, one of the, probably the most famous passages in Esther. And it's Esther 4.14. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place, and you and your father's house will perish, and who knows whether you have not attained royalty for such a time as this. So Esther, she, she sends back word to Mordecai saying, 
have all of the Jewish people fast for three days along with me and my maids, and then I will go before the king, and if I perish, I perish. So she goes before the king, she finds favor with him, he, he puts out his golden scepter and asks her, what is it that you want? And she says, I want you and Haman to come to a banquet. They go to the banquet. He asks her again, what is it that, what is it that you want? I'll give you half, up to half of my kingdom. And she says, I want you to come to another banquet, you and Haman. Haman's feeling pretty puffed up that, you know, I'm the only one being invited to this banquet with the queen and the king. And so the second banquet, she reveals to the king the plan of Haman to destroy, you know, the Jews and that she herself is a Jew. And the king is upset. He goes out to the garden. In the meantime, Haman, he's trying to beg for mercy from Esther, but he ends up tripping and he falls. And he falls as, as the king comes in and sees him and he thinks that Haman is making a pass on, on the queen. So he's furious. And Haman had built these gallows to hang Mordecai on. Well, the king is so furious, he has the guards come in and take Haman out and hang him instead. Um, the, the king, you know, he passes an edict that the, the, on the day that the Jews were to be annihilated that they can defend themselves. So they end up defending themselves and, and you know, the people are saved and um, Mordecai ends up becoming Haman, or I mean, uh, Mordecai ends up becoming Xerxes' right hand in, in place of Haman. And the whole story um, um, of Queen Esther, it just really makes me think about how no matter what we're going on, what's going on in your life, wherever you're at right now in your your job, your your family, your marriage, whatever it is, just know that God has put you right where you are for such a time as this. And it's up to us to get into prayer, to listen for his voice, to know what his destiny is for us, what he wants us to do. And if we say no, you know, just know that God's will, God's plan will be done with or without you. You just won't receive the blessings. If God puts on your heart to go witness to someone and you don't go, he'll raise up someone else to go do that, but you'll miss out on the blessings that came with doing that. Whatever it be that, that, that God's put in on your heart, only you know that because you're in prayer and you're hearing what the Holy Spirit's telling you in your heart that he wants you to do. So I think a lot of people, they, they just, they feel like there's no meaning in their life and there's no purpose and am I just here to survive? Well, start asking God what it is that he has, what his will is for you and be quick to listen and do it. So back to Perm, Perm over in Israel, um, one of the traditions that have come through the years is everyone dresses up like it's a big masquerade party, just how Queen Esther um, appeared to be one thing, but was a Jew. She appeared to be, you know, a Persian queen, and she was really Jewish. Um, you know, uh, her heritage was Jewish. So that's one of the traditions. Um, our family started celebrating Purim about 15 years ago in like February, when it's kind of just the, that in Minnesota cold, boring month. We, I, the, my children, we started doing a masquerade party, you know, um, and people would come dressed up and, and we usually did it around Valentine's Day. And um, when we learned about perm, we're like, well, this is perfect. You know, it's already a masquerade party. So we started having a perm party and everybody would come dressed up. And one of the things it talks about um, during perm, it's a time of feasting, of joy, of giving gifts of food to your friends and to the poor. and and it's just a time of celebration and for us as believers each one of the biblical holidays that are in the bible 
They have great meaning to us as believers. We're grafted into a Jewish root. And all of these biblical holidays, they they were all shadows of things to come. They all have prophet, prophetic meaning behind them. And, and they're all about Jesus, about our Savior. And again, without Perm, without Hanukkah, without Perm, these are times that we can remember how God, he protected his people from being annihilated. So it's um, it's just a, a beautiful story. You know, Esther, it's just, it's like a fairy tale, but it's just a beautiful story of how, you know, when God asks you to do something, he's, he's using you to fulfill his, his will in, in your life and in, in so doing so to those around you. And so be praying what God's destiny would, it is that he has for you. Get into prayer so that you get into your prayer closet so that you can be quick to hear what it is that he, he puts on your heart to do and then be quick to do it. Because again, you have been placed right where you are in this time, in this generation. And don't fear for your children when you look at the world around you and go, oh my, you know, what's it gonna be like for them? God brought them into the world for such a time as this. We've each been put on this earth for such a time as this. Um, I just wanted to um, have you also look at uh, Romans 8.28. All things work together for good to those who love the, lo the Lord. So if you have messed up and you're like, oh, I didn't listen to what God put on my heart to do and now I'm in this situation, just know God uses our mistakes. He will use you right where you are no matter what it is that you're, what situation you're in right now. Just be praying and asking him to show you what he wants you to do in your life. So I hope that helped you. I, I just wanted to share um, the beauty of this, this biblical holiday perm and how it has great meaning to us as born again believers in Jesus because without perm we wouldn't have had our Savior born. Um, and I also wanted to just share this example of Esther that you know, God has a destiny for each of your lives. And you aren't here just by chance. You're here for such a time as this. And I believe our time is to be a light onto the dark world around us, to a dying world around us, and to be sharing the love of the Lord and sharing the plan of salvation with those around us. That's a destiny of all of ours as believers but he has a specific destiny just for you. And it's not gonna be the same for me as it is for you. So if you have not subscribed yet to my channel, please do so hit the bell so you can be notified of any upcoming videos I upload. I do one a week. Um, and if you have any prayer requests, leave me a comment. I'll be happy to pray with you. I'm just trying to be obedient to the Lord. He's put on my heart to do this. Um, YouTube channel and so I hope you were blessed today with that let's just end in prayer thank you Lord for each person that joined me today thank you Lord that you did not put us here on earth just by chance that you have a destiny for each of us thank you Lord for your providence and protecting your people um, through Esther from being annihilated so that we could have our Savior born from the Jewish lineage, from the line of David, as was, as needed to be done for, for prophecy to be fulfilled. Thank you, Lord, that um, we're grafted into this root and you protect your, your people, you, you protect the Jews and, and you protect us, Lord, because we are your children. And uh, I just thank you, Lord, that, that we have you, that, no matter what mistakes we make in life, you can still use us and that all things work together to those who love the Lord. Thank you. We praise you. And I pray now you put your hedge of protection around each person listening and their families physically, spiritually, and emotionally. We pray this all in the mighty name of Jesus, Yeshua.
Amen. All right. Thanks for joining me at the lake. Have a great day and I'll see you guys soon.